Hello and welcome. This is episode 18 of a podcast Engineer to Manager. I'm your host, Alex Maestrenko. In this podcast, we are diving into the essence of engineering management. Apart from the interviews with experienced EMs, we start a series of EM-related book reviews. This is the first episode. Like and subscribe this video and tell us in the comments what last engineering management book did you read. We will add it to the list and possibly review it in the future or not. Their book today is from Will Larson. An Elegant Puzzle Systems of Engineering Management. This book has been released on May 28, 2019. Will Larson has been an engineering leader and software engineer at technology companies of many shapes and sizes, including Yahoo, Deek, Social Code, Uber, and Stripe. Will writes a blog about tech. His book is actually a collection of notes from the blog. The link to the blog you can find in the video description. Actually, I received this book as a birthday present. Let's talk about the book structure. Their book contains seven chapters that are organized as follows. Chapter 1 is Introduction. Chapter 2 is about organizations. Organization is a collection of people working toward a shared goal. Organizational design is an attempt to understand why some create such energy and others create mostly heat, friction, frustrations and politics. This chapter covers the approaches to organizational design and evolution, team size, uh, high-performing organizations, productivity in the age of hypergrowth. Their chapter finishes with a succession planning and you can check out their podcast with Anna Kurila where she talks about uh, this topic. Their next chapter is about tools. In a management, their change is the catalyst of complexity. This chapter provides a box of tools for leading efficient cha changes. Check out their podcast with Nick Constantino on reducing their entropy and handling their changes. Their chapter explains what is a product management, vision and strategies, metrics and uh, baselines, as well as application of metrics to organizational design, organization reorganization, and their uh, changes. Uh, their chapter finishes with their designing of centralized decision-making groups and their presenting to senior leadership, as well as their tools for time management and their communities of learnings. Their next chapter is approaches. For engineering managers, challenges emerge unexpectedly from a hundred of small decisions with few rules and no promises. Many of the challenges are difficult. This chapter covers handling them. Work with a policy, not the exceptions. Saying no, ways engineering managers get stuck and partnering with your manager. Check out their podcast with Irina Stanesco, where she talks how to build a trust with your engineering manager. Their next chapter is about culture. Uh, the culture is not what we say, but what we do. This chapter shows some persistent efforts that can be used to shift their culture in the organization. An inclusive organization is the one in which individuals have access to opportunity and membership. Their uh, next chapter talks about careers. This chapter explores how we can design an effective interview and hiring process, as well as steer the career. Their roles over rocket ships and why hypergrowth is a big predictor of personal growth. Running a humane interview and designing an interview loop. The chapter also talks about cold sourcing and hiring funeral. For the careers, levels, designation, momentum and levels, check out their podcast there with Phil Calzado, titles matters, but what is more important is the reporting structure and their distance between you and people who are doing the work and making decision. The last part of the book is appendix, which uh, covers uh, different topics and their uh, references to um, other sources. Their book is actually an encyclopedia containing tools, methods and frameworks. Therefore, I recommend reading it once and coming back to the appropriate sections when it's required. Don't try applying it all at once. Select one tool and try it out. Their book doesn't cover managerial activities that you find in lots of places such as one-to-ones, giving feedback, team building. Instead, it exposes systemized approaches that can be used to stabilize and grow engineering organization. Change is one of their key aspects of the book. The book is very solid with amazing uh, figures. It has an outstanding list of references for further reading and explorations. I decided to review three selected subsections from the book that I find particularly interesting to show you the feeling of the book. 
Two topics are close to my heart, and one of the topics has been recommended uh, in my post on LinkedIn. The first uh, part is uh, presenting to senior leadership. Make sure that you adapt the communication style, which is company specific. Prepare a lot and practice a little. Leadership presentations tend to quickly detour, so practice isn't quite as useful. Prepare for these detours. Be ready to discuss their details and be ready for their unexpected questions. Challenge yourself and you should be familiar with all details. When you talk to a senior leadership, answer directly instead of hiding details. Expose them and explain how you plan to address them. Start with conclusions. So their general approach to presenting to a senior leadership is show their topic that is important to the business value. Establish historical narrative, ask explicitly, make a very clear ask and start the meeting by explicitly framing your goal. Use data to show and drive the conversation. Spend a lot of time exploring the data. Explain your decision-making principles. Explain how you proceed and how you think. Uh, next, say what's next and then what should be done. And in the end, return to an explicit ask. The next chapter for review is ways engineering managers get stuck. There is a quite comprehensive list of reasons in the book. Newer managers get stuck when they only manage down or by building something their team wants, but which is their company or customers aren't interested in. New managers sometimes uh, define their role too narrowly. Effective man managers tend to become the glue in their teams filling any gaps. That means something doing things you don't really want to do in order to set a good example. Sometimes new managers only manage up, so they focus much on following their management's wishes. New managers sometimes never manage up. Excellent work go unnoticed because it's never shared upwards. Sometimes you optimize locally and there sometimes you assume that hiring never solves any problems. These are some examples of failures that are done by their newer managers. The next, their uh, book talks about more experienced managers. More experienced managers do what worked in their previous company, and this doesn't work all the time. They spend also too much time on building relationships, which is particularly common in managers from coming from larger companies. This works different from different companies. They assume that hiring can solve every problem. They also get disconnected from the ground. Truth. These are several examples that are listed as uh, common pitfalls for uh, senior managers. However, there is a list of um, mistakes that managers at any level um, make. They mistake team size for impact. It's not about their team size to make a better job. It's a different job when you choose a different level of or the team. They mistake title for impact. They confuse authority with uh, truth. They don't trust team enough to delegate and they let other people manage their time. The last one, which is sometimes also my fault, is that I only see problems. So make sure you understand, read carefully through these pain points and uh, see whether you can improve yourself when you understand and realize that you are falling into these mistakes. The last chapter that I decided to review has been recommended by my subscribers on LinkedIn. So make sure you subscribe and you put your comments in under this video or uh, on the social media, and you actually get a direct influence on, their, on the video that we create. So the last chapter is the performance management systems. It consists of three parts. The first one is career letters. Career um, are the foundation of an effective performance system. They describe their expected behavior and responsibilities for a role. You can see a nice uh, figure in the book about their career um, letter. Try to make a letter for each unique role that have at least 10 individuals. One method for reducing their fixed cost of maintaining letters is to establish a template and shared teams across the letter. This also focuses on a set of common values across the company. Each letter is composed of levels, which is described how the role evolves and responsibility and complexity as a practitioner becomes more 
um, senior. Liberal definitions are quite effective at defining their behaviors. The next part is a performance designation. The next step is to apply the ladder. People can use a ladder as a guide for self-reflections, but you also want to create formal feedback in the form of performance designation, which is how an individual is performing against their expectation of their career ladder at the current level. More important than their scale used for rating is how the ratings are calculated. You can use uh, self-review, peer reviews, upward reviews and manager reviews to create a review of your performance. With this you can establish a provisional designation which you can use as an input to a collaboration system. Collaborations are rounds of reviewing performance designation and reviews with the aim of ensuring that ratings are consistent and fair across the team. Make sure you're campaigning there against the ladder, not against others. You have to study distribution, not to enforce it, and their feedback for weak performance should be delivered immediately. The last part of this chapter is their performance cycle. Most companies do either annual or biannual performance cycles. An elegant puzzle is most useful for engineering managers who have been in their role for a year or more. You've settled in a bit and you've developed a routine. You are comfortable enacting a change. Tell us how do you like the format, what EM books should we review, and don't forget to like and subscribe.